Good morning, Clarkston. It is so great to be with you again in our video worship service format. Um, we took a few weeks off to do just some written services and take a break from the videoing, but we are back with our usual format where you will have Lisa sharing some music and Rhonda reading some scripture. Uh, I just want to say it's great to be back with you and also to offer a word of thanks for all the support that you have given this church uh, during the holidays and especially over the last few weeks. Uh, your gifts and tithes are never taken for granted and we deeply appreciate them and they do important work still here at our congregation even though we're not able to get together. And that of course is the second thing to bring to our attention is how much we miss you, how much we miss being together and I hope that we will have that opportunity again soon. But for today, let me say welcome to worship for this January 24th, 2021 service, for this the third Sunday of the season of Epiphany. Good morning, Clarkston. Our scripture text for the morning comes from the book of Psalms, the 62nd division, verses 5 through 12, and it reads, My soul wait thou upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Surely men of low degree are vanity. And men of high degree are a lie to be laid in the balance. They are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy for thou renders to every man according to his work. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Clarkston. Happy New Year to everybody. So sorry I couldn't be with you on first on the first Sunday of the year, but I'm back. And I just wanted to say we've come this far by faith. <laughs>
Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of God for and through us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. We all have different stories of our most pivotal encounters with God that shaped and continue to shape our lives. If you took a few moments, you could probably think back and recall some of those big faith experience moments, right? Those holy moments, or aha moments as they're sometimes called, they're the ones that sort of left a mark on your life. Some of those moments were large and transformational and we knew it was big when it was happening. Some might have taken a little while to sink in and we came back to them later to fully understand the message. Maybe some were huge, like really huge, take your breath away, emotional eye-opening moments. Or maybe some were small, inconspicuous ones that snuck up on you. They may have happened at an actual church event or activity or church building. Maybe they were guided by a faith leader. Or it may have happened outside the church walls, in an unexpected place and an unpredictable time. Or it could have been all or none of these. You see, one thing is for sure, we have all had our own version of these major encounters with the divine. And they were all different and unique to each of us. They were our own, special and distinctly ours. Our verses from Mark today show us the unique encounter of Jesus with some of his future disciples. These fishermen. I think this story has to be placed in the pivotal encounter category, right? Because the moment was life-changing for them. The guys just dropped everything and followed Jesus on the spot. Our faith language calls this their calling or their calling moment. They were called by Jesus to follow him, and they did. But we must understand that callings don't have to be just a one-time thing. In fact, callings, plural, are really better than just one calling. A calling brings with it a sense of clarity, a sense of destiny, when we feel like we have found our purpose and it infuses us with the energy and drive to move forward through challenges and obstacles. A calling is not just for priests or pastors either, and it's not just about work either. Callings must go beyond our jobs and provide a durable center in our lives that we can rely upon, that we can always count on, that we can always come back to. Today, I want to share with you some insights on callings from Dr. Chip Roper. Dr. Roper is a former pastor and now the executive director of a group called the VOCA, VOCA from the word vocation. VOCA makes work better for individuals and teams by transforming secular jobs into sacred callings. And here's what Dr. Roper says. He says that there are five major types of callings in our lives. The first one, we are called to family, to roles in our family. All of us come from a family. Most of us have living relatives. If we're married, that adds a layer of calling to our lives. If we have children, that adds an old another layer, caring for our parents is part of our calling. Raising our children, relating to our siblings, it's a sphere where God gives us a responsibility. 
and it all counts as being part of our calling. The second dimension of calling is our calling to our church, our faith family, or our spiritual community. The Greek word that's translated church in English means to be called out or called together in community. All of us have gifts and relational capacity which God invites us to use in the context of a spiritual or church community. The third area of calling is work. And this is the one where we have all been taught callings show up, right? This is where we're supposed to have a calling for our jobs, for our work, our vocations. Work is where most of us will spend the majority of our waking hours during our adult life. God has a calling for our work lives. Helping find and follow that calling can be a real challenge. Our fishermen today in the story, they make it seem easy, don't they? They were probably brought up to think that fishing was their only calling, their expected vocation. Certainly nothing wrong with it. But their big holy moment had something else in store for them. The fourth type of calling that Dr. Roper speaks of is that we are called to our place. The collection of our neighbors where we live, work, and play. Our city or our town. We are called to a place. Now, of course, Christians are called into community um, where they serve those who are not a part of our community at times. But our place calling roots us in a place where we develop webs of relationships, responsibilities to and for others. We are called to our friends, our neighbors, and our neighborhoods. And after these four, as you might expect, the fifth calling is really the supreme calling the one at the center of all the other four. The voice at the center is God's voice. We are called to the divine, to invest and respond to that central call as a follower, as an imitator, and as a student of God. These five images were very helpful for me to think about the new and different ways that we can think about our callings in life. I want to encourage you to spend some time thinking more deeply about your callings and the holy moments that shaped you. Maybe the calling is different than it used to be, not quite the same as you first understood it, not quite how it all started. Maybe we could all use some time exploring our many callings from God and being open to what God may be calling us to next. Remember, it's not just priests and pastors who get callings, and it may require you to do even more than fishing. Amen.